We want to use this equation to answer the following four parts. Now typically we would have a graph provided for us for these questions like the previous examples but this one you have an equation only. So for a question like this when it's asking if that is on the graph since we don't have a graph to look at we have to do this algebraically. So what do we have when we have a point like this? Well the first coordinate is an x the second coordinate is a y, but we're going to write it out as f of x. That way it matches the notation that we have in the original equation. So I have x, I have f of x, and what you're going to do is you're going to plug these two numbers into the formula, and you're going to simplify it. If you get the same number on both sides of the equal sign, that means for sure that point's going to be on the graph. So let's check to see what we have. So first, I have 27. That's for my f of x. I'm going to put in negative 3 for both the x's. So I have negative 2, negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3. And now I'm going to work this out. So 27 equals negative 2 times 9. And then minus 9 there. I get 27 is equal to negative 27. These numbers are not the same, even though they look they're close, 27 and negative 27, but they have to have exactly the same number, same sign as well. So because of that, not the same, I'm going to say it's no. These are not equal to each other. So therefore, because of that, uh, they're, it's not in the graph. Next question. If x equals negative 1, what is f of x? That question is asking us to find f of uh, negative 1. So I put negative 1 in there in place of x, which means that I have to do the same thing in my equation. So that's negative 2, negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1. I want to simplify that. I get f of negative 1 is equal to negative 2 minus 3, which is going to give you negative 5. So if x is equal to negative 1, the y value, or f of negative 1, that equals negative 5. If they wanted you to write this as a point, you could. That would be written this way. Negative 1 and negative 5 would be the actual point that's on the line itself. So negative 1, negative 5. For C, if f of x is equal to 0, what is x? That's saying put 0 into here in place of f of x. So 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 3x. All right, so now, since I have a quadratic that's set equal to zero, the way to solve these is by doing factoring. You look for a common factor you can pull out. So since I have x repeating, I know I can pull out at least one x, and in fact, that's all I can pull out because you look for what the lowest power of x is, and that's the most that you can take out. So I'm going to factor out a single x. So I have negative two x squared. I take out one of the x's, that means I get negative 2x left over, and then I get plus 3 remaining. You can always make sure you got it right by multiplying this back through, and if I multiply that back through, I will get negative 2x squared plus 3x. Next, once you have it factored, the way to solve this is you take each one individually and set it equal to 0. I have x is equal to 0, and I have negative 2x plus 3 equals 0. This one is already solved, so that's one of my answers, x is 0. If you solve this, you're going to get x is equal to 3 halves, and that would be the second answer. So if x is 0 and x is 3 halves inside here, that means that the whole thing will end up equaling 0, and that's what originally what it's asking us to uh, solve for. The last one, what's the domain? Okay, domain is all the x values that make the function defined. So in other words, you want to make sure that there's no division by 0 and no square roots of negative numbers. In this original one, I don't have any square roots, I don't have any fractions. So because of that, there's no restrictions on what number I can put in there. Any number I put in there will always be defined. So therefore, your domain is going to be all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity.